Welcome to Twisted News, everyone. I'm Andrew, and today we're looking into an unlikely predator who stalked the hiking trails of Arizona, a young woman who was last seen barefoot outside a hotel in Canada when she vanished. Get rid of his scary mysteries, Twisted News. Number one, the predator of Thumb Butte Trail. In the cool early morning hours of June 13, 1987, Prescott, Arizona's Thumb Butte Trail echoed with a chilling scream that ran across the Arizona desert. That scream belonged to 23-year-old college student Kathy Spazito, a name that would soon become synonymous with one of Prescott's most haunting mysteries. Kathy that day had embarked on a solitary hike along that trail, a path popular among locals and tourists alike. The natural beauty of the place and close proximity to downtown Prescott made it an emblem of serenity and safety where joggers and hikers would breathe in the crisp air and admire the vastness of the landscape. So, no one was expecting that on this day, such a serene location would turn into a site of horror. Other hikers would recount hearing or harrowing cries for help, but by the time they managed to locate the source, it was too late. Kathy's life had been brutally taken. She had been bludgeoned with a rock and a wrench, suffered a gunshot wound to her eye, and finally was stabbed fatally in the head. This was no random act of violence, it looked like the dark design of a predator who went out intending to commit the act and looking to experiment with different tools. The brutal nature of the murder was a shock to those in Prescott and Yavapai County. Thumb Butte Trail, once considered a haven of peace, became a crime scene and a reminder of the fragility of life. Now this case sort of fizzled out, but a few years later, some actions from a young man who was 16 at the time of Kathy's murder started getting on investigators' radar. His name was Brian Scott Bennett. Originally from Calvin, Kentucky, he was a junior at Prescott High School in 87. Having spent only 18 months in the town, Bennett's transient nature sort of kept him under the radar. But the seemingly ordinary teen held deep, dark secrets. In 1990, he was accused of sexual assault on none other than Thumb Butte Trail, as well as an attempted sexual assault at a house party shortly after. In 1993, he was accused of kidnapping and assault of a woman at a local post office. Despite being arrested for this, Bennett eluded justice with acquittals or lack of convictions. But by 1994, his story took a grim turn when he took his own life. With his death, any direct testimonies or confessions died too, leaving a trail of unanswered questions. It wasn't until 2017, three decades after Kathy's murder, that advanced DNA technology delivered a breakthrough. Detectives were able to identify a descendant of Bennett and link him conclusively to the 1990 Thumb Butte trail assault. The pieces started to fit and the puzzle of Kathy's murder began to take shape. The Wapai County Sheriff, David Rose, recently made a chilling revelation that the DNA from the wrench used in Kathy's slang matched Bennett's as well. The predator of the Thumb Butte Trail has been unmasked, but the extent of his terror is yet to be fully comprehended. Authorities believe that there could be other victims, unsung stories of horror that Bennett may have orchestrated, which may soon come to light. Number two, the mysterious disappearance of Emma Philippoff. Canada is home to some very mystifying unsolved cases. And 11 years on, the haunting vanishing of 26-year-old Emma Philippoff continues to be one of them. It was a cold winter evening on November 28th of 2012 when 26-year-old Emma was last seen. The Empress Hotel in Vancouver became the focal point of her mysterious disappearance. Earlier that night, Victoria Police had been called over there about a woman who was acting oddly. That woman was Emma. 
Standing outside the Grand Hotel, she was in her bare feet, appearing lost and profoundly disoriented. Officers who responded to the call engaged in a 45-minute conversation with her, only to conclude she wasn't a threat to herself or anyone else, and she was eventually allowed to leave. However, the unsettling fact is that this would be the last time anyone ever reported seeing or hearing from her. Over the years, the police's phone lines were inundated with tips and alleged sightings. Some people said they saw her walking the streets that night. Others said she was planning to move back home to Ottawa, so maybe that's where she was. But regardless, nothing brought authorities any closer to finding Emma. The most promising lead arrived in 2018, though, when a man named William broke his six-year silence and claimed to have given Emma a ride almost 70 miles from the Empress Hotel on the very next morning after the cops had talked with her. Williams' delayed confession was due to his fear of implication. Despite this seemingly solid lead and exhaustive three-day search with cadaver dogs in the areas he mentioned yielded nothing. Shelley Philippoff, Emma's mother, described her anguish over her daughter's extended disappearance. For her, time became an endless stretch of anxiety and heartbreak. Emma's life prior to her disappearance was a transient one, frequently moving between jobs and homes, even occasionally seeking refuge in the woods. But she was smart and a good person, so not knowing what happened to her had to be torture. The month before her disappearance, Emma herself had hinted at a possible return home during a conversation with her mother. On the fateful day Emma went missing, against advice, Shelley arrived in Vancouver. Her worst fears were confirmed when she realized her daughter wasn't at the woman's shelter where she claimed to have been staying. And with the passage of time, the mystery only deepens. What was wrong with her that night outside the hotel? Did she wander off and accidentally hurt herself, or did she meet up with the wrong person? Anyone with information is encouraged to contact the Victoria Police Department or Crime Stoppers. So there were two of the most terrifying and mysterious news stories that we have for you guys this week. Please like, share, and subscribe, and all that good stuff to help our channel grow. Remember, you can always listen to these over on our Scary Mysteries podcast channel. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'll see you soon.